Well, last week was the race of adaptation. This week, it's the race of situation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here as we get ready for our 34th race of the first season of the SRA Duracell Cup Series. Here today at the 2.66 High Banked Super Speedway, known as Talladega. This racetrack is going to play host to the middle race of our third round of the chase for the championship and basically sets us up into our final elimination race next week at Rockingham where the final four to compete for this season's championship will be determined. Eight drivers coming into this race in the hunt still and of course if any of our eight remaining playoff contenders go to victory lane here today, a track that has always seemed to be one of those wild card races. You never know who's going to win. If one of the playoff drivers go to victory lane here today, they bypass Rockingham and have an automatic ticket into the championship four at Homestead. It's going to be 47 laps of racing here today, and we call this a race of situation because really the 40, first 46 laps, you can't really determine who's going to be winning the race. The dominant car of the race could get stuck in the sucker hole, get kicked to the high side with no draft, and fall to the back on the final lap. It really comes down to... Basically off of turn four on the final lap where we're really able to know who's going to be in the hunt to win this race and This super speedway is much different from a lot of other super speedways because you can see over there in the background The middle of the trioval that's normally where the start finish line is at most of the super speedways But down here near the exit of pit road is where the start finish line is at Talladega and those extra hundreds or so feet could be the difference between who's going to finish first and who's going to finish in second. Dylan Poteet lines up on the pole position for this race, the two-time winner, and one of our playoff eight is going to try and see if he can lock himself into the final four. He'll start alongside of our Kentucky winner, former playoff driver James Shelley. Let's go get that command. Drivers, start your engines! And one thing that we should point out as well, well, actually two things we should point out that Talladega can be known for. Number one, Talladega can be known for a fuel strategy race. And if you're going to come to Pit Road, you better hope and pray you're going to have a lot of others that are coming to Pit Road with you. Because if you come to Pit Road by yourself and then you leave Pit Road alone, you're not going to turn very good lap times under green. We saw a pit strategy race in last week's event at Boston. And we also have the possibility of the big one looming around every corner and a lot of drivers as you take a look at your playoff grid that came into this race in the playoffs, they did not have good runs last week at Boston so they can ill afford a poor performance here today as well. You see down at the bottom of the grid, Jesse Turner, Carter Freeze, and Carson Gum, they all finished I believe it was 36th, 37th, and 38th in our Boston race last week. The only driver that had a good run was Benny Watson. He was the only one of our playoff eight to finish inside of the top 15. So if he can finish with another good run here today, he might be able to uh, point his way in to Homestead, Miami with maybe a top 15, top 20 finish next week at Rockingham. But I think if you look here at Dylan Pote, Jessica Shelton, Jesse Turner, Carter Friesen, Carson Gum, if they DNF here today at Talladega, they're heading into Rockingham, I believe, and a must-win situation. So 47 laps of racing here today. It's going to take them a little bit of time to make those laps, and a lot can happen in a lap here at Talladega as well. We could have as many as three, four, five different lead changes before we get back to the start-finish line. We'll see them three wide, possibly four wide. They can handle four wide here, just as long as they don't lean on each other going into the corners, and... The draft is going to be so important here today because we are running the 2019 rules package. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, this is only the second super speedway race that we have run this season. The first one, season opening Daytona 500. So the, the schedule has been very limited when it comes to super speedway racing, although a lot of uh, super speedway aspects have taken place at a lot of our bigger mile and a half and two mile tracks with the 2019 rules package. But... Let's see what these drivers are going to do. Talladega always seems to shake things up. Will it shake things up as far as our playoff points going into next week's race at Rockingham? We're about to find out as Dylan Poteet and James Shelley take the green flag. Let's roll at Dega. It's the Dylan and Dylan show. That didn't take long. Dylan Young, who started third, ducks to the bottom, and he'll be the race leader coming out of turn number two. Michael Norman follows in his tire tracks. He's got his teammates right behind him. Matthew Rodriguez, the 57. Matt McIntyre in the seven. Michael trying to go up to the top side. 
He's got Dylan Poteet there as well. All four of the M&M cars up inside the top five right now. As Dylan Young scampers away, they are four wide behind here. And this is Kyle Matthews and Matt McIntyre in the middle. It settles out to three wide. There you see the playoff points leader, Benny Watson, there in the middle. That bright blue Toyota Camry as Dylan Young is going to lead them down. And he is going to lead the first lap barely as Dylan Pote got a heck of a run on that top side. And he's going to clear around for the lead. Or is he? Jay Jefferson on the bottom. They're three wide for the top position. Jefferson is going to prevail at least for now out of turn number two. But man, that run on the high side, you saw Dylan Pote get, that just shows you how important the draft is. And are we under caution? We're not under caution. Keith Batson's on pit road. That's an unscheduled stop for the 39, and it broke the field up. I saw a number of drivers quite a ways back. Austin LaPlante was one of them and a few others there. And I think they all had to slow up because of Keith Batson coming to pit road. Lopez, Mitchell Collins, all these guys got held up. Now they will probably be able to get single file and catch up as this group up ahead of them is three and four wide. So I think they might still be able to stay in the draft. There's some others back here that lost the draft as well. William Brock, Carson Gum, Zach Rogers, Jose Mills, Carter Friesen, and Julius Anderson. Three of those drivers are playoff contenders and there is some rear end damage on the back of Carson Gum. And I don't know how that's going to affect him speed wise, but it looks like he's still up to speed and still in this draft we'll see if this group of six can catch up to the tail end of the pack as this group here has already caught back up Jessica Shelton and Chris Dollerton were in this pack so good for them to be able to get back up into this lead group and we'll keep tabs on this group back here Jesse Turner's back here also at the very tail end and we got a couple more drivers coming to pit road Carson Gum and uh, Jose Mills as Keith Batson leaves pit road I don't know if that's regularly scheduled for Mills, but I think maybe Carson Gum with that rear end damage might be coming to pit road on purpose. And now those drivers are all going to have to rely on a caution, I think, depending on how long they stay on pit road. I think Keith Batson is trapped a lap down. I don't think he got back off pit road before uh, the leaders came around and lapped him. Looks like William Brock, Zach Rogers, Car Carter Friesen, and Julius Anderson might be able to catch up back to this group as Jay Jefferson's been doing a pretty good job these last couple of laps, keeping everyone at bay. Battling number five, trying to get his first win of the season. Uh, you know, it's been very interesting here with our playoffs so far. First three races back in round one, all three races won by playoff drivers. But since then, we have had four straight races where a non-playoff driver has gone to victory lane. Charles Sanford now trying to get the race lead away from Jay Jefferson. I remember back to uh, the Hershey's Cup Series when Charles Sanford swept the Talladega races. One season, we got trouble. Couple of cars around. Johnny Gardner and Jessica Shelton have spun. And is that going to bring out the yellow? Looks like Gardner may have hit the inside wall. And no, no caution as Carson Gum is back to pit lane. And now Jay Jefferson's got Benny Watson on his back bumper nose to tail. No caution. Johnny Gardner, I guess maybe he didn't hit the inside wall, but Jessica Shelton's got damage now, and she's coming to pit road. So in the early stages, two of our playoff contenders have had issues, and both have had to come to pit road in the early stages of this race. Carson Gum and Jessica Shelton. Carson came into this race 37 points back from the race leader. Jessica Shelton came in 27 points behind. And of course, with this being our second race, our middle race, uh, when we end up seeing the updated playoff points at the conclusion of today's race, it will be in relation to fourth in the standings as to uh, the plus and minus differentials. Looks like Keith Batson might be off the pace, and that might be why he came to pit road. He might be down a cylinder or something as... Benny Watson, the race leader, closed up on him very quickly. And you can see Keith Batson up way to the top side, trying to get out of the way of all these race leaders. Last week, Diego Yepes picked up his second win of the season at Boston. That was his second win in three races. His uh, first one came back at the road course of Lime Rock. And he would love to be able to pick up his third win of the season. Only driver at Unknown Motorsports so far to go to Victory Lane this year. And right now the top five have really broken away as they are three wide, four wide back, sixth on place on back. 
like Jay Jefferson's going to clear for six, and here's all those others. Trey Wright, Dylan Poteet, Dylan Young. Field's definitely gotten a bit broken up. But I noticed some drivers that have really recovered. One of them, Zach Rogers, and the other one, Chris Dollarton. A couple of playoff drivers that had lost the draft early on. They're now back up in the lead pack. Dollarton crossed the line in the 17th, or make that 18th position. Zach Rogers in 19th. Meanwhile, back up towards the front. The field still very split up. And this is all due to uh, trying to get around, I think, the 39 of Keith Batson. Benny Watson continuing to lead the way. And like I said, if he hit, has a good run today, if he has a top five, I think he could point his way into the final four because he was the only driver that really had a good run of the playoff eight last week at uh, Boston. Jordan Lopez, two-time winner, trying to become a three-time winner so far this season. We've only got one four-time winner. That's Lopez's teammate, Jose Mills, and one three-time winner. That is the 88 of William Brock. Jordan Lopez trying to tie William Brock for second most wins this season. Benny Watson's only got one win this year. He's looking for his second. His only win so far this season came at Darlington in the uh, Throne of Games 400 or 500. It was one or the other. I don't remember what number I had after it. Top three have broken away. Toyota, Ford, Chevy, Watson, Lopez, and Charles Sanford. Sanford... We've already documented multiple times the only one of the Retro Racing Enterprises cars that's yet to go to victory lane. Ryan Acosta now up there in the fourth position. Great run for him in that Nike Slim Jim Mustang out of Joanna Atwood Motorsports. A lot of news coming out of Joanna Atwood Motorsports uh, in the past week as that team will be moving from Mustangs to Toyota Camrys. A couple of drivers that are returning to the team. James Qualls, the team owner, will be driving the number 54 instead of the number 11. Johnny Gardner will still be in the 14, but uh, he will be sponsored by Nutrichomps in a Chase Briscoe-looking Camry. Speaking of Gardner, there he is, 38th right now. Uh, I believe he has a lap down. Jordan Lope, or make that Jose Mills, is on the tail end of the lead lap, and the leaders are catching those both quickly. Carson Gum sits on pit lane. And he is multiple laps down. And that says to me, with him coming into this race, eight of the eight playoff contenders, he will be going into Rockingham in a must-win situation. Jessica Shelton is a lap down as well, so that is not going to help her. She could find herself in a must-win situation next week to move into the Final Four. Gardner is a lap down. Keith Batson two laps down. And right now, Carson Gum has scored five laps down. And the field's still very much broken up. Watson, Lopez, and Samper have really scampered away. And this group on back, you'd think they'd produce more speed and run them down. But no, that's not the case. They're four and a half seconds back. With Ryan Acosta. Excuse me. Ryan Acosta and Ryan Brommer right now in fourth and fifth. Dylan Young dropped back to sixth. Diego Yepes, William Brock, Jay Jefferson, and Austin LaPlante, I believe, are your top ten right now. Well, Diego Yepes bested Trent Dunham last week on pit strategy. Trent Dunham trying to bounce back from that as he is in the 13th position. And the caution is out. Yellow flag is out for the first time today. And that is a huge break for a couple of drivers. And wow, looks like we had a big wreck take place. And Zach Rogers, one of our playoff contenders, was in it. James Shelley, Jack Mitchell, they were involved as well. Julius Anderson's on pit road. That is a huge break for some drivers. It looks like we had another of our backmarker motorsports cars involved there. That's Cole Baker in the 18. Now the tough break for Jessica Shelton is she was already trapped a lap down. Johnny Gardner, I believe, is now trapped two laps down. And Carson Gum still sits on pit road. So, uh, if we did, had not had this caution come out, we would have shown you everything that took place with our playoff contenders, courtesy of the NRC Split Cam. But since we have the luxury of being able to do it here under the yellow, we are going to show you everything that happened back from lap one up to this point 
to what brought out our first caution of the day. See some pitch strategy going on here, about uh, fourth on back pitting, but Watson, Lopez, and Sanford decide to stay out. Well, Keith Batson knew he had an issue, and he was up in the outside line. You could see the blue car, that blue and yellow car in the middle, just in front of Austin the plane. You'll see him dart to the bottom. Now, the reason we're focused on Carson Gum is we want to see how we got that rear end damage. All right, there's Batson. Trying to drop it low, trying to drop it low. Looks like Carter Friesen was the one that let him be able to get his car down to the bottom. And I think maybe Julius Anderson's going to run to the back of the 19 right there. Yep. And then Carson Gum also runs into the back of Jose Mills. That inside line got stacked up because Carter Friesen lifted to allow Keith Batson to get to the apron to be able to get to Pitt Road. And everybody else, I guess, didn't realize what was going on. So Carson Gum caught up in a chain reaction there, and that has had him spend multiple laps on pit lane. Even if he is able to continue, he'll pick up a couple of spots, but I don't think there's any chance of him getting back onto the lead lap. Let's now see what happened to Jessica Shelton and Johnny Gardner off of turn number two. Four wide situation here. And let's see. Uh, it looks like Gardner may have come down on Shelton who was clearly there, and then when the both of them hit the double yellow line where that transition of the banking to the flat takes place, that snaps the 0-2 around, and then Johnny Gardner is going to head down, and he's going to, ooh, he just skimmed that little jut out area of the wall, and then also noses it a little bit further down into the inside wall, so he did hit the inside wall, Shelton did not, however, she got, I think, a little bit of damage when Ryan Butcher got into the back of her, and that's why she had to come to pit road, having to uh, fix the rear of that card for aerodynamic purposes. So that is why she is a lap down, and the same for Johnny Gardner. But that did not bring out the caution. Now let's find out what did. So this was back around, I think, the 13th position. James Shelley, Zach Rogers. Rogers going to get a big run here. Tries to go to the outside, and it looks like Shelley tried to move up, thinking he was clear on the six, and Rogers was there to his right rear. And he gets hooked up into the wall, does James Shelley. And at this point, they had it saved. But then right there, you see Zach's car snap loose, down into Matt McIntyre. Cole Baker collected right there as well. James Qualls on the brakes. I think he gets a little bit of it, but not much. Seth Cole, Michael Norman, Carter Friesen avoids this. And I think maybe Rogers, yeah, Rogers was the one that got hit. As uh, Shelley was able to keep his car going and Rogers' car drifts back down the track. And he's going to get it right there from Mitchell Collins, Jack Mitchell, and then Julius Anderson runs into the back of Mitchell's McDonald Chevrolet. Well, that's definitely going to take Zach Rogers out of this race, who came in 15 points behind the leader, Benny Watson. And so this could definitely put him into a must-win situation. Already into the first uh, 11 laps of this race, three playoff contenders, Rogers, Shelton, and Gum, have all found issues at Talladega. Well, we got some interesting varying strategies under that last caution. We saw Ryan Acosta from the fourth position come to pit road when pits were open, and he had a lot of others that followed him in. Benny Watson stayed out, so did Jordan Lopez and Charles Sanford. That's because they all pitted the following lap. Trey Wright stayed out, led a lap, and then he pitted on the following lap, and I believe we've got a car on pit road that just barely made it to his pit stall. That was Vince Almriego. He stretched it a little too far, and he was coasting on pit lane out of fuel, so he barely makes it into his stall, but I don't know if he's going to get out before going a lap down. Speaking of lap down cars, you got five of them on that inside line. Two of them playoff contenders, Carson Gum and Jessica Shelton. Now, Carson Gum is five laps down. Shelton's only one down. So if Shelton could get up there ahead of the leaders and get a, a caution, she could maybe get back in the lead lap. Jose Mills also a lap down and two laps down to Johnny Gardner and Keith Batson. Out of the race are the cars of James Shelley, Zach Rogers, Jack Mitchell, and Julius Anderson. So Rogers will finish today's race in 38th. And, oh, looks like it was more than a fuel problem. It was a mechanical problem for Vince Almriego. He is out of the race. 
They're saying it was a piston issue for him. So 30 cars on the lead lap of, I believe, 35 that are running. Ryan Acosta is going to lead us back to the green over Ryan Brommer, William Brock, Austin LaPlante, and Trent Dunham. Very slow restart there for Ryan Acosta. Carson Gum gets away. And the battle for the lead. Looks like it just changed to Austin LaPlante in the 48. I don't know what happened to Ryan Acosta on that start, but it seemed like he did not get going. And now the Northeast Motorsports teammates, the 48 and the 88 working together. Oh, but they're slowed up behind the 98 of Jose Mills. Ryan Acosta trying to use Jessica Shelton to draft. And it's going to work. He's going to get around for the race lead, it looks like. And we'll also clear Jose Mills. So Ryan Acosta goes back to the point. So Jessica Shelton right now is on the tail end of the lead lap. She's hoping and praying for a yellow flag to come out right now. Because if she can beat Ryan Acosta back to the line, she would line up at the tail end of the field. And maybe be able to pick up some spots here in the second half of this race. Field has gotten themselves awfully spread out, though, so I don't know if there's a whole lot of a chance for that. Let's find out where the rest of our playoff contenders currently are at. Chris Dollarton was up there towards the front. Now he's trapped on the bottom with no friends. He's dropped back maybe outside of the top 10. Looks like he'd be scored somewhere around 11th right now. Let's actually wait until they get around to the start-finish line to find out where he is. Charles Sanford right there with him. Benjamin Miles just got around him, and I believe that was for the 10th position. As Dollarton brings his Dr. Pepper forward to the line, he was 7th last time by, this time by, he is in 11th place. Carter Friesen, he's had a very eventful day right now in the 17th position. Let's not forget the last and only other time that we were at a super speedway was the Daytona 500, and Carter Friesen won that, so uh, not much of a surprise to see him fighting his way up towards the front here today at Talladega. Got to go a long ways back before we find our pole sitter, Dylan Poteen. He's back in the 25th position right now. Looks like he might have a little bit of damage on the hood of that GoDaddy.com Chevrolet, but I can't quite tell. Jesse Turner right now back in the 24th position. And Benny Watson. I don't know what happened to him. He was out front early on in this thing, and now he's all the way back in 28th. I almost wonder... No, he's, he's about to go a lap down, actually. He's just ahead of the leaders, as is Matt Haas. So I don't know what happened to the 72, or the 70, yeah, 72, the 75. But that's definitely not what he needed. And I'll tell you who this is definitely putting a smile on the face of, and that's just about everybody else that was in the playoff field. Because it's going to allow Chris Dalton, Dylan Poteet, Jesse Turner, Carter Friesen to maybe close up the points gap between themselves and Benny Watson heading into next week at Rockingham. William Brock to the race lead now in the 88. William Brock has won three times this season. He won at uh, the road course of Sonoma. He won at the mile and a half track of Charlotte. And he won at uh, the two mile speedway of Auto Club. I don't remember if we ran the 2019 rules package at Sonoma or not. Yes, we did. So all three of his wins have taken place at tracks where we have run the 2019 rules package. And he's trying to make this his fourth, which would tie him with Jose Mills for most wins this season. Second place is Ryan Acosta. Austin LaPlante is in third. And Trent Dunham right now in the fourth position. Jordan Lopez right now in fifth. And the top five have really broken away. Battle is on here for sixth in this pack. Adam Garcia getting around his teammate Dylan Young. Teammates side by side. Charles Sanford, Kyle Matthews, Benjamin Miles is in this group along with Michael Norman, Chris Dalton, Ryan Brommer, James Qualls, and Diego Yepes. Four wide into turn one. And Kyle Matthews was the lonely man up against the wall and lost about three, four positions in one turn. Saw James Qualls get maybe a little piece of the wreck that took Zach Rogers out. But it looks like that car is still up to speed. And he is just inside of the top 20. 
Battle of lines here, inside and outside line. Outside line prevails, LaPlante and Lopez beating the duo of Acosta and Dunham. As William Brock out in front by himself, which is normally not a good thing. He is, for the moment, holding court in that position and I mean that's that's very interesting that he has been able to pull away by himself against the rest of the field that's very unusual for a super speedway the only thing I would worry about is with him being by himself he is using up an awful lot of fuel and so he could find himself anywhere from three to five laps shorter on gas than everybody else behind him now he is able to get the draft here off the back of the lap car of Carson Gum. You got drivers on the tail end of the lead lap just up ahead of him, Matt Haas and Benny Watson. So he'll be able to save a little bit of fuel in the draft this way. Whoa! I think there was contact right there between Watson and Mitchell Collins. And I believe that was a pass four position as well. Well, maybe not. No, Collins is a lap down. So I don't know what happened to the 22 that has him trapped off the lead lap, but he's 32nd off the lead lap right now. And I think we got another car up ahead that we're going to have to deal with pretty soon. That's Keith Batson, who is down a cylinder, just trying to salvage what he can. And as Benny Watson heads through the center of the tri-oval... Batson's just now leaving the tri-oval, so this group is going to catch, and so we'll see what William Brock can do as this group's about to catch the 39. They're going to catch him here in the corner, too. All right, now Benny Watson in the 75. He's battling the 8 of Matt Haas because that is a battle for the 28th position. Cole Baker there coming out of turn four as the leaders are on the back straightaway. That would be another position Watson could pick up. And if this thing does go green to the end, it's going to be very interesting as far as the uh, green flag pit stops as well. Because I'm pretty certain, even with the timing of that caution, that caution came out rather late. But I think that these drivers are still going to have to be on pit road at least one more time before the conclusion of this race. My goodness, look at this. This is such a strange looking field for a super speedway. You got Lopez all by himself. LaPlante's all by himself. Ryan Acosta and Trent Dunham in fourth and fifth trying to get around the slower machine of Jose Mills. And you've got the top 10 separated by 13 seconds. That is really strange. I don't know if that's the 2019 rules package or what it is. But it is very strange to see and I almost wonder if I can't figure it out, but it almost looked like right there, the inside line checks up through the corner. Because he saw the zero of Diego Yepes, it almost looked like he bailed out of the throttle. Is he saving fuel? Are they saving fuel down that bottom line? I don't know. Let's follow this again. Let's watch the 25 and the zero down there on the bottom. Let's see if they lift coming out of the corner. Nope, but we do have drivers on pit road. Dylan Young, Adam Garcia, and Michael Norman all peeled off. And so did the race leader at the time, William Brock. Ryan Acosta and Trent Dunham are in as well as Austin LaPlante. That turns the race lead over to the 38 of Jordan Lopez. Lopez trying to put Shelton back off the lead lap. And now with them pitting at this point, which would be just only about uh, 15, 16 laps since last being to pit road. I almost wonder if they'll have to be on pit road again. I mean, this would put them projected making it somewhere around to lap 42 to 44. If that is the furthest they can go on fuel. Unless the fuel window is opened for them to make it the rest of the way and that's why they're all pitting. Well, Trey Wright stayed out an extra lap under our last caution, our only caution, so he's going to stay out an extra lap again. Everybody else, looks like, is on pit road. Kicking up some dust there as both uh, Carter Friesen and Benjamin Miles got a little off the pit road. And I believe... Oh, we got trouble here for Adam Garcia. That car blew up. Looks like he ran into the back of somebody or something happened. Is there a caution for that? 
Doesn't look like it. Nope, the pace car is still on pit road. So whatever happened, Adam Garcia is not going to bring out a yellow flag. It's like Trey Wright, Matthew Rodriguez, and James Qualls all stayed out an extra lap, and now they will hit pit road this time. And hopefully Garcia keeps it down on the apron. And nobody runs into him, as right here would possibly be your race leader when the pit stops cycle around. It's like Lopez make cycle into second. It all depends on what happens here with Matt Rod, Trey Wright, and James Qualls. Oh, there's what happened to Adam Garcia, perhaps. Jesse Turner, the Aflac Ford, all crunched up. And that's another of our playoff contenders. And that is a driver who suffered a DNF last week at Boston. Could not afford a bad performance here today at Talladega without heading into Rockingham in a must-win situation. And it looks like that's going to be the case for the 47 car. Tough break for him. Jay Jefferson and Levi McIntyre on pit road. Carson Gums still sits on pit lane. So another extended stay for the 19. This has just not been his race either. And the race lead will indeed cycle around back to William Brock. Who makes the pass on Cole Baker. Puts him now officially one lap down in the 28th position. Let's follow the 47 onto pit lane. And I think his day is done. Yes it is. So Jesse Turner and Carson Gum both definitely look like they'll be heading into Rockingham in must-win situations. Same could possibly be said for Zach Rogers, who was the first playoff contender to take his car behind the wall today. And Benny Watson cycled around to second. Uh... Oh, I think I know what might have happened. I'll bet you Benny Watson came to pit road when we went back green. And that's why he was so far back. And now we're still waiting for him to make his pit stop. And I think he's going to pit right now. So that's interesting. Both he and Matt Haas pitting now. And my projections are correct. These drivers would be able to make it till around two to go. Maybe the white flag lap. So Benny Watson, it appears... Played some strategy, almost lost a lap because of it, but it may pan out into his favor. I mean, right now, it looks like just about everybody would be on the same strategy with the exception of drivers like Charles Sanford. Um, and who was the other one that stayed out? Jordan Lopez. And Trey Wright, he's able to stay out one lap extra, as are Matthew Rodriguez and James Qualls. And Benny Watson's able to stay out about two laps past that, along with Matt Haas in the eight. So if this thing does go green to the end, this is going to be very, very close, I think, for the 75 and the eight. Benny Watson just now leaving pit road, so he's going to basically battle to get back on the tail end of the lead lap. He just got put a lap down by William Brock. And we mentioned a lot of drivers, playoff contenders that have struggled here today. So Benny Watson with that little bit of a cushion he had after being the only one that had a good run last week at Boston. I guess they're, they're figuring they can play with a little bit of strategy here today, see what happens. I mean, hey, if it works out and they win, they go into Rockingham not having to worry about where they finish. They're locked into the Final Four to compete for the championship at Homestead. So that will cycle Jordan Lopez to second. Mitchell Collins coming to pit road. This is a battle for third between Ryan Brommer. Or, I'm sorry, no, Ryan Brommer right now is a lap down. Third place is going to be Austin LaPlante. As Carson Gums back on pit road again. Uh, where is... There he is. Fourth place is under contest. Ryan Acosta and Trent Dunham battling for that spot. And I'm listening to him going into the corners, and it sounds like they're lifting. Sounds like they're half-throttling, so they might... Uh, you know, these guys might all be saving fuel, and maybe that's why they're all so split up. Some drivers are saving, some drivers are not. Sixth right now is going to be Trey Wright. 
And dependent on when we see William Brock back on pit road again, we can calculate that Trey Wright will be able to make it two laps further than the 88. Dylan Young right now is in seventh. Eighth is Diego Yepes, and then you got some teammates back here in ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Dylan Poteet, Matthew Rodriguez, and Matt McIntyre. So right now, Poteet is the highest running of the playoff drivers in the eighth position, or sorry, ninth position. Chris Dollerton, why is he going on the apron? Oh, there was a wreck! Caution might be out. That's Cole Baker sitting in the middle of the track. Caution is out. Jose Mills was involved. Ryan Acosta was in it. And I almost wonder if maybe there might have been contact between Trent Dunham and Ryan Acosta. And this changes everything. And this is going to trap ben Benny Watson down a lap. And I believe Jessica Shelton was on pit road involved in this. She was. So another of our playoff contenders, Michael Norman, I think, was in it. And this does change everything, because I do believe now if these drivers all hit pit road under this caution, they will be good to go the rest of the way on fuel, and everyone who is all broken up after that green flag pit stop cycle, they will all be nose to tail for this restart. This one might have been the big one. And I think that we know right, right where to start. I almost wonder if we might have had another incident similar to what happened to James Shelley and Zach Rogers that brought out the first caution. And I think this one might have taken place possibly between Trent Dunham and Ryan Acosta in what was a ongoing battle for the fourth position. No, no it was not actually. This is Cole Baker in the 18, obviously off the pace. No hood on that race car. The whole interior of the front motor exposed and you can see right here he sees Ryan Bromber to his outside so he moves low to give him room doesn't see Jessica Shelton had a huge run Shelton gets him in the left rear quarter panel cannot collect it back up both drivers are going to hit the wall and then this is in one of the worst places for a wreck to take place because it's right in the center of the trioval and those cars are going to drift back down and these both of these drivers I think are going to get clobbered First one that's going to happen here is going to be Ryan Acosta. Look at Trent Dunham getting low, getting low. Acosta can't quite get there. He nails Jessica Shelton. And then as these drivers are trying to get their cars refired, I think there's more drivers coming into view here. There's Jose Mills. He's going to clobber Cole Baker. And I believe we had another driver in it too, Michael Norman in the three. Where is he? Or was he on pit road already on purpose? Oh, he was already on pit road, so he was on pit road uh, scheduled, I guess. So it looks like we only had four cars involved in this, and I thought we had a lot more. There's Baker sitting in the middle of the track, and that's why we saw Chris Dollerton live go to the apron. So Shelton, Baker, Acosta, and Mills involved in this one in the uh, middle of the tri-oval going down to the start-finish line. And like I said, this puts everybody now, if they pit now, they're in their fuel window to make it the rest of the way, and we'll basically now just be battling to the checkered flag. Well, with that caution, we had a lead change on pit road as well. Jordan Lopez beating William Brock off pit lane, so he'll restart the leader. Brock will be second, LaPlante in third. Trent Dunham fourth, Trey Wright will be fifth. Diego Yepes will line up in 6th, 7th Chris Dalton, 8th Dylan Poteet, 9th James Qualls, and 10th will be Seth Cole. I believe we do not have lap machines on the inside line because we will be restarting with 10 laps to go. So that is a little bit of a welcome blessing as well. So right now, up inside of your top 10, you've got two playoff contenders, Dollarton in 7th and Poteet in 8th. Let's find out where the rest of them are restarting. Carter Friesen will restart in 15th place. Benny Watson is going to be 20th. He is one lap down. First car one lap down right now. And then the rest of the playoff contenders, I believe, are out of the race. Jessica Shelton will finish in 30th. Uh, Jesse Turner is 33rd out of the race, Zach Rogers 38th out of the race, and Carson Gum is 35th. He's still running, but he is 13 laps down, I believe, still sitting right now on pit road. So if you're Dollarton, if you're Poteet, if you're Carter Friesen, this is a big opportunity here in these final 10 laps. 
And have we seen our last caution? We'll have to wait and see. William Brock dominated there during that last green flag run as he was out by as far as 10 seconds over Jordan Lopez. But now they're all lined up and we'll see what the draft is going to do here in terms of these drivers battling potentially for the race lead and maybe even the race win. So far we're at a four race streak of non-playoff drivers winning playoff races. And you got to go all the way back to sixth before you get to Dylan Poteet. Top five right now, all non-playoff contenders. Only one of them looking for his first win of the, of the season, that being Trent Dunham, as Lopez, Brock, LaPlante, and Yepes have all been to victory lane this season. Lopez twice, Brock three times, Yepes twice, and LaPlante once. Top four are going to be side by side, two rows deep. And Lopez on the outside line is going to keep the race lead. Trent Dunham battling with Austin LaPlante for third has to give way. As, yeah, that outside line seems to be a lot better off the corner. It's like that inside line, they get a little tight off the turn. Have to lift some. Here comes Brock. He's going to try the bottom in turns one and two. Trying to take the lead away from Jordan Lopez. And don't look now, but he had a fast car in qualifying. Got the pole. And that bright green, number 31 of Dylan Poteet, has worked his way now up to fifth. Just wanted to see, too, if uh, Michael Norman... He's on pit road 10 laps down. He's still in the race, but he's 10 laps down. Is out of the race after that incident where the cars of Ryan Acosta, Jose Mills, Jessica Shelton, and Cole Baker, but that kind of went without saying. Trent now going to try and go for third on Austin LaPlante. There is Poteet, Trey Wright, side by side with Diego Yepes. That is for seventh, I believe. No, that's actually for sixth. James Qualls in this mix as well. And then they broke away from this group. Chris Dollarton's in this pack, along with Dylan Young, Matthew Rodriguez, Carter Friesen's in this. Ryan Butcher, Benjamin Miles, Matt McIntyre, Charles Sanford, Kyle Matthews as well. Trent still trying to get third from LaPlante. Meanwhile, William Brock, Jordan Lopez, side by side for the lead again. You can see that William Brock just can't seem to get that inside line going. Normally, when we go to super speedways, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, if a driver gets to your inside going into a corner, they're going to pass you by the time you exit out of the turns. But that's not been the case here, at least so far, for William Brock. See, he gets that huge run. Slingshots down to the bottom, but he can't keep the momentum up through the center of the corner. You see, even there, going into the entry of the corner, he's almost not quite to the left rear. Going to pull alongside here out of turn two, though, and then right there, it's like the car gets tight. He cannot get the forward bite off the turn to keep the momentum going down the straightaway. Well, this next time by, it will be five laps to go, and now Brock's giving Lopez a little bit more room through the center. I think he's trying to get himself a much better run. See if he can get a better momentum on the straightaway and maybe make the move there and not even have to worry about doing it in the corner. Here he comes. Big run. Drifts it low. I don't think he's going to be able to make this work. Nope. He's got to make the move on the straightaway. He's basically got to get himself either completely alongside or a little bit more of an advantage going into a corner if he's going to complete the pass, I think. Let's see if this works. Does it more early? Does it on the middle of the back straightaway? He's going to get alongside. This might be it. This might be the pass if he can keep it through the center. And no, he can't. Well, I mean, do you try the outside if you're William Brock? Maybe get a run on the straightaway, jump up to the right rear quarter panel going into a corner? Oh, no. They're going to catch Keith Batson in the 39 who's only topping out at 165 while they're going almost 200 here, these two cars. So he could definitely play a factor depending on where they catch him and which line these guys are in. You saw Michael Norman still sitting on pit road, so... We've had our fair share of different things here today. Mechanical issues, crash damage. They're going to split him. Brock on the bottom, Lopez up top. That might have done it. 
Oh, can Brock keep his foot in it, though, is the question. Can he keep the momentum through the center? No, he cannot. Lopez again swings around the outside and keeps the top position. And it's like Lopez is saying, hey, if you're going to pass me, you're going to have to do it on the bottom. I'm not giving up the top. And there are going to be three laps to go here at Talladega. Jordan Lopez, two-time winner this season. He won the third race of the year at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and then he went to Victory Lane at uh, Michigan. So very good at the speedways and showing he's just as good at, as good at the super speedways. William Brock is a three-time winner. He's trying to get his fourth win on the season. Jordan Lopez trying to time, tie William Brock for second most wins this year at three. And then this battle back here for third is going on almost five seconds behind those top two. James Qualls now up into the third position. Trey Wright in fourth. Trent Dunham right now in the fifth spot. Trent trying to get a little bit of redemption here, finishing ahead of the zero Diego Yepes who finished ahead of him last week, and Yepes was the one that ended up winning at Boston as a result. Going to be a good points day for Dylan Poteet and Chris Dollerton, though, as Poteet right now is in seventh, and Dollerton right now, along with Carter Friesen, well, as soon as I say that, Dollerton's getting kicked up to the high side. Friesen's now cracked the top ten, though. See if Dollerton can pick up some spots here in the final lap and a half. As back up at the front, still the battle for the lead side by side between Brock and Lopez, but it's still not working for William Brock. He's going to have a little bit of a gap between himself and Lopez here. Maybe this might be the time, but I don't know. Time is running out for him. If Brock's going to do it, he's going to have to do it down here in 1 and 2 or else wait until 3 and 4. If he can't make it work here in 1 and 2, I think this is all she wrote. He's going to try it as the white flag is displayed. One more lap to go. Mitchell Collins leaving pit road. It's been a very struggling day for him. Brock's not going to be able to make the move. If I were him, I'd tuck back up in line behind the 38, trying three and four, and boy, he lost a lot of momentum off turn two. I don't think he's going to be able to get back to the bumper of the 38 car now. That's about two, three, four car lengths, the gap between himself and Lopez. Lopez is running away with this now. Maybe one of the more unconventional looking races at Talladega I have ever seen. But nonetheless, the end result is going to be Jordan Lopez picking up his third win of the season, his first at a super speedway. He'll take the checkered flag here today in the Geico 500. And you saw William Brock had a big run there, but... All that momentum he lost on the final lap, there was just no regaining it, even with the draft we get in the 2019 rules package. And the only playoff contender looks like going to finish in the top 10 will be 7th place Dylan Poteet, who came into this race in the 4th position, which, heading into next week's race at Rockingham, is going to be that cutoff line that we will be constantly referring to as far as drivers trying to make their way into the final four at Homestead. So there it is. Standings official. Jordan Lopez brings it home with the win. It's a 1-3 finish for Blue Oval Automotive as Trey Wright completed the podium behind William Brock. Diego Yepes, Trent Dunham. Well, they finished one behind the other just like they did last week with Yepes in fourth and Dunham in fifth. James Qualls with a great run there in sixth. Dylan Poti will bring it home in 7th. We'll have to see where this positions him heading into uh, Rockingham next week. LaPlante will bring it home in 8th with his teammate Benjamin Miles in ninth, and Matthew Rodriguez completes the top 10. Carter Friesen and Chris Dollerton finish in 11th and 13th. Dollerton came into this race 9 points ahead of Poteet. So 9 points ahead of that cut line, if you will. Carter Friesen came in 11 points behind the cut line. 36 points behind the points leader, Benny Watson. So, uh, Dollarton will definitely find himself, I think, in a nice position. And Friesen may put himself back into contention to get into the final four. And where did the rest of our playoff contenders finish? Off the lead lap or out of the race. Benny Watson, who led uh, quite a number of laps early on, he'll finish a lap down in 20 seconds. So, that pit strategy did not work out for him. But he managed to finish ahead of a lot of other playoff contenders for sure as we got to go all the way down here outside of the top 30 before we find Jessica Shelton, who finishes out of the race in 30th. 
Jesse Turner, who DNF'd in 33rd, he's in a must-win situation in next week, no doubt about that. Same for Carson Gum, who finally brought that car behind the wall in 35th. So Turner and Gum have had back-to-back -back DNFs here in this round. And then also out of the race was the car of Zach Rogers, finishing in 38th. And uh, he came into this race second of the eight playoff contenders. We'll have to see where this DNF situates him. So this could definitely give us a lot of different scenarios heading into Rockingham. Some drivers could find themselves locked into the playoffs if they get uh, top 15, top 20. Everybody might not even be safe, and I think we're going to have three, maybe four drivers that will be in must-win situations possibly at Rockingham next week if they're going to make it into this season's Final Four. No doubt about it, Talladega played its part into being a factor of uh, giving us a very interesting scenario heading into Rockingham for who's going to be in the Final Four and who isn't. But like I said, one of the more unconventional type Talladega races where it really seemed like it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles rather than pack racing. So uh, hopefully we'll have better racing next season. But, uh, you know, we get what we get. And the end result is the end result. And Jordan Lopez... Certainly not unhappy about that as he gets his third win on the year. He now is tied for second most wins this season with William Brock. One win behind his teammate, uh, Jose Mills, who currently leads with four. So that's going to do it here today from Talladega Super Speedway. We've had the race of adaptation at Boston. The race of situation here today at Talladega. Next week, we go to the race of conservation. Preserving your tires, preserving fuel. It could be a fuel strategy race at North Carolina Speedway. I hope you guys enjoyed today's race here, though, from Talladega. If you did, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe, and be part of the crew today. We have shown you full finish results. These are your point stands and your updated playoff points heading to Rockingham next week. You will notice that the driver in fourth is the cutoff line driver. The plus and minus is drivers in relation to fourth in the standings. It gives you a look at who might be in contention to get to a Final Four spot, and who would probably be in a must-win situation to make his way into the Final Four. And at this point, none of our eight remaining playoff drivers have locked themselves into the Homestead Miami finale yet. So until then, though, I've been Seth Cole, and you've been watching a production of the NCAA Offline Racing at its best.